Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome, and uh, glad we have a quorum tonight for our meeting. So um, we want to start off with a review and approval of the January meeting minutes. Does everybody uh, have an opportunity to review them and have any comments, questions? All right, can I have a motion to approve, please? Approved. So moved. Okay, thank you very much. If we can uh, note that. Thank you, Kathy. Okay. Um, could we have the uh, health officer's report, please? Sure. This month, 24 facilities were inspected. We had eight pools that were inspected. Um, Lizette Subach from our um, Parks Department um, has extensive history um, experience in health and wellness. So she's instituted a new program here at the Township Building for employees. She's calling it Wellness Wednesdays. Uh, she has a schedule that I attached to the packet. So just a some new and interesting wellness um, sessions for employees um, from yoga, nutrition, counseling, meditation, they'll be available over the next few months. Um, just an FYI, because of the weather tomorrow, they did cancel the first one uh, tomorrow. Public health concerns, um, I don't know if I mentioned this last month, but Tammy Cohen, our director from Parks and Recreation, she had eight new um, AEDs installed throughout the township and in, in the township building. So this building used to have one, now we have one on each level. So we have a total of four in this building. We have a total of three over at Public Works and there's one at the rack. Um, there's still a continued concern for hoarding situations involving the elderly. We did have another case this month, but fortunately there was family to help out. And finally, we had our workplace safety committee meeting on the 6th. The topic centered around safety concerns in storage areas in the workplace. We had a near miss down in our basement. Um, the areas can become cluttered and cause hazardous conditions. And there was also a presentation by Heather DeCancio, who's also in our parks department. Um, and she gave us a presentation on mental health and strategies to relieve stress in the workplace. Thank you. Great, thank you, excellent, really appreciate it. Um, I was really impressed when I saw the Wellness Wednesdays, so that'll be taking place here in yes. this room? Yep, in this room in Radnor yeah. Shire. Mm -hmm. Really exciting, so hopefully you get a good turnout. Now, do people need to register for that, or can they just show up? I believe they do need to register, and if, um, I think that the, everything, all the information should be on the website, so there should be a link to reach out to Lizette to register ahead of time. Okay, thank you very much, Marie, excellent update. Really appreciate it. Um, we have a guest here, Superintendent Flanagan. Did you want to give your presentation before we get on with the rest of the agenda? Yeah, why don't you come up? And uh, I know you're very busy, so uh, we're happy to have you here. So that would be terrific. It's an honor to be before the Board of Health. Uh, on behalf of the Radnor Township Police Department and uh, the Township Manager, uh, Mr. Zankowski, we're asked to talk about um, the Safe to Say Something initiative, which is something that was launched by the Pennsylvania Attorney General's Office um, at the beginning of this month. And it is a new way for people to communicate about troubling, scary, or direct threats. As you know, almost everybody is using Facebook, a cell phone for ways of communication. The goal of that is to take that ease that people may feel more comfortable than dialing 911 or walking into a police department or making a report at the principal's office. This is directly geared to schools, any school, public or private, but grades K through 12, an important thing to know about. So colleges and other areas or some type of special school would still need, and I don't want to say the old way, but you still want to be able to call 911 or have direct communication. This is a 24-hour monitored center, and it also creates a way for schools and the police to interact with the same team. So schools have been required to have a team internally, could be big or small, that they will be able to dissect the information if it's not a high-level threat. High-level threat immediately goes to the home police department and the school, but if it's a medium threat or something that they need to dig into a little bit, there's a team available 24-7 to conduct those investigations and determine whether the police will be called. We do prefer specifically that they call 911 because it's the quickest and most guaranteed way, but if this system works, I think it's excellent. 
Um, one of the neat things about this is we were able to participate. I have up in front of you a letter. Um, there was a joint letter from the Radnor School District, the Radnor Township Police Department. I want to be very clear with our total 13 schools, we have to worry about all of them. We gave them this letter so that they could copy and make sure that each of the private schools were very well engaged and could use the same terminology. So it was a great partnership between us, the school district, and our private school partners. And I know some of the private schools took advantage of it. Um, I do have copies in the back, and each of the Board of Health has a respective copy in front of you, and this is being shown on our cable channel. I would like to bring up um, this is what the, the um, safe to say something, it's actually safe with the number two say PA.org. People can research and follow up and do a little bit more digging and information. Um, there's a lot of, it's a very simple website and it talks about what it's doing. With permission, I'd like to just play a 30 second video. Did he really bring that into school? Maybe it wasn't real. Maybe I'm wrong. But what if I'm not? Uh, on the website, um, again, it has more information. It shows you how to do it, and there's some continued reading items, so if everybody would like to. Did a little bit of research since, since the initiation in Pennsylvania, 4,900 tips in the first month. Two of those were Radnor Township uh, police activated responses. So for the statewide system, uh, almost 5,000 activations. So, and again, the goal is anything that you're not sure of. We know people would call in an active shooter or, or a major attack. It's the goal is that thing that doesn't make you feel right, just doesn't seem right. This is a new communications tool. We greatly support it. I thank the Board of Health for getting an update on it, and we'll keep you informed as that goes on. Um, just real briefly, um, we had the Radnor residents for gun control um, donate gun locks, free gun locks. Just yesterday, there was a shooting of a 12-year-old female. She lived in Montgomery County. She was in Philadelphia by unattended weapons that weren't secured. We believe in safe ownership gun and responsible gun ownership, and we have these out tonight, and we'll make sure that um, they're always out when the Board of Health meets. We have several of these. They're free. Second thing we did besides for the guns, uh, gun locks is we also sent a letter to every pediatrician in Radnor Township telling them about this, and the Radnor police will take them for free um, to their respective locations. And after what happened yesterday, I think we're going to write a letter to all the physicians so that they have them just to attempt to get the word out. Um, I'd love to have the Be Smart and the Radnor residents for gun safety maybe come before the Board of Health um, and give a presentation because I think, one, they should be acknowledged, and two, it's a very important message. I think we would all agree on that. Um, the Radnor police team up with the Parks and Rec, train all of our different staff. Uh, the Health Department, Marie, and three of our officers, Sergeant Joe McGuire, Mark Bates, and uh, Mike Fisher go out. We're teaching CPR, Stop the Bleed, which I think is a very important part of Run, Hide, Fight, and some of the other things. Um, and I just want to let you know we have three classes. We've trained over 30 people since the beginning of the year. Um, we're working with two private churches uh, to also bring that training to make Radnor as safe as possible. So I'm very proud of those activities. And that was just a brief update, and uh, I hope to get to see you and work with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. That's excellent. That really brings a lot of light into um, what we can do and our children and keep them safe in school because it is a scary world out there sometimes. Um, question. So if other townships are interested in the gun locks, um, you know, I can think my son is in outside township school, would this be a letter I could forward them or? So it's not, obviously we don't go into other towns because many of them have different safety initiatives and different programs. So I can only speak to that. You're welcome to share. And if somebody needed five gun locks, we're gonna make sure we have a large amount. Um, I, if I mentioned this, I think I forgot, the district attorney, uh, Kat Copeland, ended up finding out about what the Radnor uh, residents for gun safety 
did and match their donation with funds from the DA's office. So we have a good amount of gun locks and we really want to get them out. Um, the other thing that we're doing is on the big events in Wayne, Bryn Mawr, and um, hopefully our township events since we just got them, we will have a small box, you know, or I shouldn't say a small box, but plenty of them on site for free so that people grab them as they go. We're not checking IDs. We want to promote gun safety. If it makes it to Connecticut, then that's a safe gun in Connecticut. And that's what we're hoping to do. Um, oddly enough, when we did this, we realized that Radnor Township Police did not have a policy or issue a safe. Uh, I was able to go to the township manager and without hesitation, we issued each police officer here from the superintendent on down a gun, a gun safe um, with a particular protocol that they must always have it secured if unattended. So we are managing ourselves and operating in a safe manner as well. So this is an important topic and I hope we can discuss it more at a future meeting. Thank you. So would, would it be your recommendation um, that every gun owner, despite maybe having it locked up in a safe, et cetera, get a gun lock? It's, this is a touchy topic for people, and we're not talking about gun control. We're talking about responsible gun ownership, so I do want to stress that. And what we're saying is we, they need to be secured properly. If you take training classes, they will give this to you. Make sure that you take the opportunity of taking a training class if you purchase a weapon. If you're not sure what to do, simply call your local police department. Obviously call us if you live in Radnor, call Lower Marion, wherever it may be that you live, and get information on how to do it. The websites um, promote many different opportunities for safe, um, uh, safe gun ownership, but in particular we want to get them locked because burglaries and other things can happen. Mm -hmm. Criminals can get a hold of these. And we don't, if they do get a hold of it, we want to have it so that it's locked. So it's very hard to get off. And that's what the goal is. Thank I, you very I, much. I have one more question, just one, once more. If a gun owner wants to get a gun lock outside of the public uh, events, do they come to the police department? Yes. Where are they available? Thank you, ma'am. Um, they are available 24 seven at our front window and downstairs with our patrol division. They don't carry them in the cars just because we have enough stuff rolling around in there, but we have a box that's open 24 seven um, every time. And then now uh, ask uh, Marie and her team to put them out for each board of health meeting so they're always accessible. Okay, thank you. Gosh, I wonder if they should have them at like public town halls or the commissioner's meeting because I know we get a large audience of people here as well, so. But the it's a great start. Yeah, the yeah. commissioner's meeting. Ma ma so, yeah. Matter of fact, maybe we'll put the box out here. So we have plenty of them. Maybe we'll put it out here so people see them every time. It's a great idea. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's excellent. Superintendent Flanagan, thank you for, for explaining the Safe to Safe program. That's great. Um, as far as guns in the township and things that need to be registered, like burglar alarms, dog licenses, has there been any thought? and I know it's a contested topic, but has there been any thought to gun owners in Rad Radnor Township registering their guns with the township? I can say that that's not a thought that's come from the police department. We, f we follow national models or state law. Um, it's not a requirement. Um, and at this point in time, nobody has asked that question. So I can say that it has not been thought of. Our, our, our goal right now is getting this out, but I think, you know, there's a lot of discussions, and I think if we bring that group in, uh, there should be some in interesting information from, uh, they also represent the Be Smart, and um, again, the Radnor Residents for Gun Safety. Superintendent Flanagan, um, so first of all, I just wanna say how wonderful it is for you to be here and to be committed to this topic as a parent of three boys in the Radnor School District. I speak for all of us as parents here, how much we appreciate you taking this so seriously and, and putting all this stuff out here. So the things that I just wanted to ask you were, as parents, how do we get this into our kids' hands and how are they getting to this website and and maybe our students could could respond as, as to you know ways that we can make sure they're aware of this great program and are there things that the board can do through other committees um, to help get the the word out to our to our because they're the ones who are going to see this stuff I'm assuming in a, in a large way not only parents but peers of students that they're worried about so I think that one of the two citizens groups that are working with the Township Police Department, um, one was wanting to get the word out, which we're doing by letters and some other means to the doctor's offices and pediatricians. Two is to get them before the Board of Health to dig into it a little bit more, and I think we can make that happen very quickly depending on your schedule and agenda. And then three, we do want to do some public releases. Going out to the town meetings, um, they were out at the fall festival, I could be wrong, but the gun locks weren't in yet. 
So we're now going to have something that people can put their hands on and give away and get the word out. Um, this has been promoted on our website. The DA did a, a PR blast, um, but the long level goal would be to go to meet the parent teacher associations, the PTOs, PTAs, or family associations of the school district and really get this knowledge out there. I mean, the other thing is that um, I happen to uh, work for uh, Tower Health System, and we just purchased uh, all the urgent care centers. One of them here is in Villanova. I will reach out to our leadership and see if uh, we can um, make it available to somehow have your gun locks in the urgent care center in Villanova. That's we'd, a part of our health system. We'd appreciate it. And again, anybody who's watching 24-7 or we'll drop them off to you. You want a gun lock and you're in our borders, we'll bring one to you 24-7. So interestingly, I just had a thought, Teen Health Week is coming up. I don't know if that you thought of that, but maybe this could be something that we're going to be doing while well, the students will be doing tweets. So maybe this could be one of the tweets that they put out for Teen Health Week. So uh, something to keep in mind. We can talk offline about making that happen. Superintendent, just one more question. So if a student sees something that they're concerned about, and they go on this website. This is more for just reiterating this for the, the audience that may not be here but is watching at home or uh, looks at these minutes. They're not going to get in trouble necessarily for reporting something that they see that could be a concern. And is it anonymous, or how does that work? Yeah, so it, it has an anonymous feature. The goal is to get the information and get it validated. So it, is, it has the anonymous capability. It's 24-7. You can do it from the privacy of your own home, in a car. If you just saw something, it allows you to instantly access that website. So even if you may need to call for help and you wouldn't be able to because those people may be around, whatever the scenario based, they can do that, and it does remain anonymous. There comes a point in time, though, where you can't make up items, and we take false calls very seriously. But if you have the interpretation, the true interpretation, your gut, we call it spidey sense, no offense, but our spidey sense is up, your gut, whatever you call it, if you believe something's wrong, it can go through this process and schools and police are gonna work on it across the Commonwealth. Thank you so much. It's very informative and hopefully can protect our community residents and students. Thank you for having me and all your good work. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, so back to old business. Um, I wanted to touch upon the uh, resolution, ready, uh, Radner Ready for 100 initiative recommendation. Um, I did draft a letter and went to the Board of Commissioners, and thank you, Sarah Pilling, who's in the audience, for cueing me into some of my questions at, that I had. So that was forwarded, um, and Dr. Schertz Hopko as well. Uh, so I'm not sure where Commissioner Nagel is with that in particular initiative. Marie, have you heard anything? Do you mind? That'd be great. Sarah Pelling from Garrett Hill, one of the co-leaders for bringing Ready for 100 to Radnor. It was on the last agenda, and of course the township canceled the meeting. It is to be on the agenda this coming Monday They've kept it on the consent agenda, which means it'll be at the front of the meeting. And we know <clears throat> we have a commitment of five. We have a commitment of five to one, but we don't know where the sixth person is. There's just no doubt it's going to meet. And I wanted to thank you all for endorsing it. The EAC also endorsed it endorsed it, so did the Radnor League of Women Voters and the teens from the high school. And I think this week, I met with them on th Sunday, uh, I think this week they're going to be writing notes to their commissioners. I said I thought a handwritten note and they could send them all to the commissioner here at the township building might make, well, I know they've made a real difference with that video they made. So I will have something to say more about it during public comment, but it's on the agenda, ready to go. Terrific. I was able to go back and I watched the Board of Commissioners meeting and <laughs> to uh, get a sense of what was going on. So do you need any more support from us or what can we do to help no, you? No, just, you know, if you want to give an email to your commissioner and say, you know, this is really important. We're willing to work on it. Other groups are willing to work on it. Let's go. Okay. So thank you thank so you much for what you did. Nancy's got something. 
like to add to that. Uh, and later on, I think you'll want to comment on this. It, you know, because we don't have a public health department in Delaware County, we don't have a way of tracking a lot of health issues. And one of the issues that we don't have a way of tracking is the effect of climate change on the health of Radnor citizens. Just as we, just as Joan asked questions that we don't keep track of as well. So um, I think we're going to want to start to give some thought to how do we pay attention to changes in people's health as climate change unfolds. And I think you'll want to, you want to comment now or you want to comment later? Do you want me to talk about it now or later? Sure. Well, I met with Joan and Dr. Levy today as to we've got this big public health component in the resolution. What are we going to do with it? So it came up, what we want to do is to, if there had been a Board of Health, I mean, you know, a lot of ifs, what is the incidence of, let's say, asthma, COPD, and uh, heart disease? Is this going to continue to escalate as climate change happens? Because there's, well, I'm a firm believer. I'm not going to expect everybody else is, but I am. And so we're, we, Nancy and, and Dr. Levy and I talked about some ways we might be able to gather information. Not quite sure how to do that because we really don't have a Board of Health who will do that. To begin to track some of this so that we can address it, it may also be some letters, the editor, or articles about vectors, about Lyme disease, new ticks, old ticks, mosquitoes, the same old stuff that many of us have said before. And I just learned today through a webinar that was given by Cornell, uh, there is a, a website I encourage you to look at. It's called Graying Green, all one word, G-R-A-Y-I-N-G-G-R-E-E-N -G -G -E -E uh, org. And it's a professor from Bucknell, and they're doing programs. They're starting with seniors. And, you know, as a senior, it's a different point of view because it's grandchildren and great-grandchildren who are going to really get this. But they have a very unique way of introducing people to climate change. And uh, so my brain is just going crazy. But I, th I think it's important that we begin to understand the effects of climate change on our health. Temperature, humidity, ozone. You know, I did, I've spoken before about this, this uh, tomato observational research project I did last year. And in a 120 day period, we had a, a hundred days where the dew point was over 60. And this is when it's really going to get us, and people may not understand that. Those that can will up their air conditioner, but that's really not helping with climate change. So it's going to be subtle and baby steps, but um, I think we can't wait another five years. The IPCC says we don't have much time. So we need, without scaring everybody, we need to begin to address it. So getting some facts, asking some questions, and then uh, I'm hoping that Villanova will work with us. Um, I've actually requested a weather monitor station at Villanova because there are only two places to get that kind of information right now. One's the airport, and their data is published. And the other is the one at Wings Field, and the data is not published, so you don't know. So I'd love to to see a monitor come into Radnor Township someplace so we can begin to get our, wrap our minds around some of this data. Okay. I think you might find some data or at least get a sense of what's being collected at the state level. Because if we look at, I mean, this is not necessarily gonna be impactful for, for climate change in these, but as a start, you know, there's cancer statistics that are collected by county um, at the state level, so that it's not the county that's collecting it, it's the state. Mm -hmm. So I would surmise it's the state is collecting some data by county, and that may be 
you know, related to, you know, heat exhaustion or cases, you know, various different cases that we might see related to climate change. And it may be one of those things where you have to request from the state what metrics they're collecting and what diseases. Is it asthma? Is it COPD exacerbations, as you brought up? Um, and then looking at those maybe by time if that's collected. But at the state level, we may be able to get some data by county and then maybe, you know, Township. I, I don't know the answer to that, but that may be well, a, an option. Dr. Levy told an interesting story this afternoon. She was working with some engineers on Villanova's campus, and they were going, well, we don't have that problem, and that problem's in Chester, and no, 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 we don't have that problem, that problem's in Derby. And when she said, but your grandchildren, who may or not exist, but if your grandchildren are living here and it's going to affect them, she said all of a sudden they were alert. So having worked in Chester and I've, in that lower county, I know that there are people who are going to say, well, that's down county. That's why I'm wondering if we somehow can't get a really good weather station to begin to measure some of this stuff. Because the difference in Delaware County, unfortunately, it's night and day. And I would love to see a study done more in Chester. I know their asthma st statistics are just escalating dramatically because all those trucks that go to Covanta, they all go down Third Street. And if you were there when those trucks were going down, it's just, it's dirty and it's dusty and it's noisy and it's awful. And they're going through old residential areas to get there. So I, I want to appeal to Radnor people, which is, can be different, it can be Newtown Square, but we need sort of a suburban measure so that it really hits home with people. Joan. Sierra, have we had any recent traffic studies done for Radnor Township? Well, there's small traffic studies being done. Uh, the DVRPC has a new report with data from 15. Okay. It would be great to compare that with something now. Right. Because well, I think there's been a huge now. change. There is a huge change. Huge change. There was a study done for Villanova. There was a study done for Penn Med. There's a study being done now because of the proposed Wawa station right at Aberdeen Avenue. But there's never been a, a, a comprehensive study done. And I think with climate change, we may have to do that. What, what would be the steps in getting one done? And where exactly do they do it? Is it on every road in the township, the every hour of the day? The How is it done? Developer pays for it. Developer pays for it. So it's only done where the development is going to be. Okay. Hmm. Thank you, Sarah. Really appreciate it. Okay. Um, so on to the next recommendation that I drafted this month was uh, gas leaf blowers, and that was also forwarded to the Board of Commissioners. So uh, thank you, Dr. Schertz Hopko, for that support and help in writing that to Dr. Bob or Mr. Uh, Zinkowski. So we'll hear about that. So um, any word, Marie? Do you know if that was uh, forwarded? It was forwarded. Okay. So I'm thinking it may be on the agenda on Monday as well. So more to come. Um, all right. So next is update on student project plans. Philip and uh, Lois. So our, our presentation is scheduled for June right now, and by next meeting we should have an outline ready as far as uh, what we're going to do in the presentation. And on the side we're also doing Teen Health Week tweets from the Board of Health Twitter, and we're looking into getting uh, this, the Radnor High School Twitter uh, to tweet out from there as well, get the, get the word out there. And uh, Phil, we have specific themes for each day. Yeah. Um, we talked to the... Uh, the guy who's in charge of managing the Radnor Township Twitter account, not the uh, high school account, because we thought that one would have like a greater reach out to people, because we were thinking of using the um, Radnor Board of Health Twitter <clears throat> in addition to that one to like, reach as many people as possible. And uh, we did some research as far as the different themes for each day, and these themes include substance use and misuse and violence and mental health and we we're planning on sending out a tweet like relating to each one for each day and uh on saturday and sunday there's community specific teen health 
we were thinking we could use that as an opportunity to talk about sleep because that's our project in addition to maybe vaping or another topic that's pressing in our township. Sounds great. Thank you very much. So um, can, are we going to be able to post these tweets on the Radnor Board of Health homepage? Would we be able to put a listing or links? I don't know if we're able to do that. Um, I'm not sure who has access to like editing that website, but I think if we have access yeah. to that, we could do that. Are you gonna are you gonna tag both of them, the township and ours? I think. Uh, well, I haven't contacted using the, the hashtag yet. or at sign, whatever you guys do. I think we're just gonna send out like tweets directly from each account, or maybe, oh, you're have, each account. Or maybe okay. have one of the accounts, like Radnor Township School District uh, Twitter, retweet the uh, tweets coming from the Radnor Board of Health Twitter. Got it, okay. Yeah. But we could print the text on the Radnor Township Board of Health website. Yeah. That's easy. You would have to have a box with like a live. Well, it could just be printed as a text. That's what I was just yeah. thinking, yeah. Just, just a just listing. As a, as a Word document. Yeah, or, you know. yeah so just to, uh, we'll a We'll let summer. Marie take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that would be great to have, have what it is. And I mean, if we want to put something like safe to say something and the other, um, you know, Superintendent Flanagan talked about. Yeah, I think that would be a great idea, especially because we were talking about how to get it like that website into the hands of teens because that's predominantly what it's for, I think, in schools. And I think while not many people in our school probably follow the Radnor Board of Health Twitter, a lot of people probably follow the like Radnor Township for news. So that'd be a good Twitter to use. Yeah, I think your uh, perception is exactly correct and <laughs> I would agree with you. Um, so is there any way, like I'm not a great Twitter, you know, I look at Twitter, but um, can we, are we able to view how many times people view a Twitter? So that'd be kind of interesting to maybe do a summary after Teen Health Week to see, you know, what happened? I'm not sure that you could see how many people have viewed it, but you could see retweets and people who liked it and shared it, but yeah. But do you think I, you could uh, do that? As definitely. a follow-up item? I don't want to make it too laborious, but it might be interesting no, yeah. as a follow-up yeah, to definitely. see, you know, the fruits of your work and if it was a benefit, retweets, that sort of thing. Yep. I of think course. that'd be great. Yeah, I think it'd also be helpful for you guys to look at our website, the Board of Health website, and see what you think appeals to you guys and your peers and come back to us and give us feedback about what we could do better in setting up the site if, you know, and then maybe giving us some ideas about some of the things you just said that you listed that you thought were really important stuff like vaping, for example. So if people want to just go on and, and see, and then we can kind of put, hey, check out, you know, new information on vaping on, on the Twitter page so that then they can click to the link back to the Board of Health page. So if, you know, peers and, and students want to look up what's going on, they can get back to the page as a source of information. And we can just keep sending stuff out on Twitter as we get it. For example, the say to, you know, the, um, the stuff that uh, Superintendent Flanagan, um, you know, brought up today, the safe to say something site as a way for us to get that out to the community. Yeah, I think that like, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's great. I did do the presentation on vaping um, last year, so I almost feel like I need to do that again because it's even taken off even more, and the statistics are there. But you know, we maybe we could link it to certain things, the CDC or different sites. I don't know if you're able to do that, but more to come. All right, I know you guys are busy. I don't want to put too much work on you. All right, but great work. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Okay, um, next on the agenda was West Nile vi uh, Virus Surveillance Program uh, with Dr. Simmons, and he's not here this month, and I know he was gonna do a little bit of investigation and follow up with that, so we'll just table that till next month. Um, if anybody else has anything to add to that. Um, the next on the agenda was update on suicide prevention in Radnor Township Schools, Dr. Karabassi's uh, survey. Um, she did an amazing job on um, an assessment of the township schools, both parochial, private, and public. Um, she looked at um, 12 schools, um, and there were two outside the neighboring schools outside the township in Tredyffrin Easton and I can't remember where, uh, Newtown Square. And um, it was a very impressive report. Radnor High School is very robust in terms of different programs they offer. 
um, student assistance programs, the Karen Foundation, alcohol and drug awareness, uh, question, persuade, and refer, um, speak up, um, the Garrett Lee Smith Youth Suicide Prevention Act grant. So um, I was very impressed at the different um, levels of support. And then she touched upon some uh, private girls' schools, um, co-ed, um, different academies, uh, military academy, that sort of thing. So, um, Marie, are we able to get this posted? I know she forwarded a, a newer version either yesterday or today that I was hoping we could post. I thought I heard you mention that. I don't think I received that updated version. Do you want me to? You want me to post this? I, I would wait. I have yeah. a concern about this document, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, because you can identify the mm -hmm. schools, right? Sorry, from the hints that are given. So I, maybe maybe they need to just be listed as private school number one, private school number two, private school number three, because we don't know when people agreed to talk to her, uh, we don't know that they had any understanding that their information would be made public. I have or to we have to go through a waiver process with these schools to allow us to put it on, otherwise we expose ourselves. So I, I agree with you. I, I think this has to be tabled until we either get waivers, which then requires a lawyer to write a waiver, um, so perhaps we should mask the schools, uh, other than the Radnor Township ones, which I assume, uh, I mean, we can check with the school board if they would have any issue with us making well, that available, which I can't imagine why they would. My question is, we go back, who is it that requests this information? I can't, like, where is the impetus of this whole thing going? Right, so initially it was the one of the commissioners had requested the information just to make it known to the rest of the commissioners and to the township staff what is being done or what is out there. So I think that was the goal. Okay. So when Dr. Carabasi sent me the report and I forwarded it to all of you, I also forwarded it to Bob, or Mr. Zankowski, and then I believe he sent it off to the commissioners. So to inform everybody of what's happening. I don't think it was to to um, educate you know, the community on what's out there. I think it was just what are we doing since this, this you know, tragic thing happened um, to a local student. And I have to agree with you. So uh, I think we'll just wait and pause and um, forward this to the commissioners. If they feel something needs to be posted, we'll take their lead. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, and I mean, I think we could also send it to the Radnor Township School Board, and if they're okay with it, at least we can get what resources are available for parents up on the website, if that's okay. I think right, because I, I do be think there's a greater need for parents who don't know what to do, our friends of students that don't know what to do, where they can go to get information. I don't know if that's as well known as people think, because many students don't talk about their feelings to their to their to their their peers in such a way that prevents something from this happening if it, if it can be. So I think it's important that the township students, parents, friends. I'm only speaking because of a recent issue with my own my own daughter uh, and her friend that um, tragically lost his life. And I said to her, "Well, did he talk about it? Well, no." And I don't know if she knew what to say, if she could say anything about it. Like, I don't know if she had enough knowledge to say, well, I don't know what to say. I don't know where to send them. I'm sure the parents struggled with it for years or not and didn't know what to do. So I think it needs to get out there. I just don't know what form it needs to be out to them. And this was not something in the high school, so it was a little older. But it's still a very, very tragic, hard issue because the stigma associated with it and I know that some parents pull away from their friends' friends, like they're because they're, they don't want their kids being involved in something that they can't even figure out. Is so there how do we, as a community, help these poor kids, these these struggling kids, getting information out to them? Where do the people go? So, so what about if I? I'm just going to throw this out there to the board. Is it, what if we invited um, someone from the township? to use this platform where we have an opportunity to reach our township residents and parents and invite them to come to the board um, and, and not only kind of give a presentation 
Um, and then we can make that whole, hopefully, that whole video available online for parents as a resource going forward. I'm not sure who that is, but I'm sure we could reach out to, to the school board or um, uh, Mr. Batchelor to, to find out who that person should be, at least for the township Yeah, I think school. Dr. Carabassi, she spoke, to, I'm not quite sure who she spoke to at Radnor High School, but I'm sure she could maybe uh, connect with somebody there and then have um, that representative from Radnor High School come and speak to us. So does everybody like that idea? All right, so we can definitely fit that in this spring. And okay. once again, we have our <laughs> tweets going out as well. So. Um, yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think the resource list is amazing. It's, mm -hmm. it's tremendous. So it, at the minimum, we could get that posted on the website for Radnor Township, as well as have someone come in and speak to us. So um, let me work with uh, Dr. Carabassi, and um, we'll talk this month and see what we can do for the future. Linda, do you want me to reach out to her for you? Sure, do you mind? No, I don't mind. That'd be She's, awesome. She, there is a crisis coordinator for the high school that does a lot of the township or this the other schools um their programs so i believe she gave her a lot of the information that's, oh, that's on good. here okay. so she she's been in touch with her so i can reach out to her and um thank you marie that'd yeah. be great thank okay. you so much right. and then we can look at um our presentations and then adjust it accordingly because it is um, a high priority so let me i just want to be sure that I'm, I'm doing the right thing so you want me so we're kind of want to bring somebody in from the school district who can kind of present this information, invite the, the community to view it, and then we have permission to put it. Right, be because wonderful. then it would be then yep. it would be visible, okay. and then it's approved, and then we'll have to take whatever this document is, okay. and if we want to post it, just go through it and ensure it's legal or whatever word you want to use. Okay. We assume that that presentation is going to be vetted, and and so by Correct. them coming here to give it, it's basically intrinsically vetted for us to be able to put it online so it sort of helps us be able that to get the, thought. the yeah. critical information out to folks without having to you know Expose. sort of do a lot of things that, yeah, that may not you know they'll be able to be in control of what information goes out there that's accurate and, and going to be most helpful right um, I think it's a great idea I'm wondering would it be worth it to get a panel of um, people from all of the different schools counselors from all of the schools in our township and do it as like sort of a, a focus group type sharing that we can encourage parents to attend that can be like a, a big, almost a Q&A session. I'm, I'm wondering if this is a really big, important topic. And, and I do think, as you, you had said, that I think we need to really get people kind of in and have a, a, a presentation on it. And, broaden awareness, um, increase the ideas and the sharing about it, because um, it's sort of a big mystery um, why kids do this. And as, as you were saying, you know, oftentimes just sort of no warning signs and how do we identify the at-risk kids. So. And we could maybe even just you know, open it up to the, to putting out a generic email, both to our own township schools, but the private schools in the region too, and invite them and obviously be as inclusive as possible. So, so I think that's, you know, great idea. If we gave enough notice and then put it out there and put the invitation out there, we could, you know, dedicate a good part of one meeting to do that, absolutely. Right, so you'll follow up as a first step, and then we'll talk to Dr. Carabassi and uh, go from there. All right, wonderful. Okay, um, Superintendent Flanagan, I wanted to talk to him about um, some awareness around alcohol drinking amongst our township youth. So I will follow up with him offline because he wants us to do some kind of presentation regarding that. And um, Dr. Schartz Hopko, are you ready to do your presentation on um, February is American Heart Disease Awareness Month? So uh, Dr. Schartz Hopko has presented a PowerPoint presentation on this. If I can find it, here we go. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, as you said, February is 
uh, Heart Disease Awareness Month. Okay, and I have to figure out how to forward. Let's see. Ah. Okay. So, women are at greater risk for heart disease than men. Heart disease is, in fact, the leading cause of death for American women. It's number one for African American and Caucasian women. It ties with cancer among Hispanic women, and it's second to cancer behind for American Indian, Native Alaskan, and Asian Pacific Islander women. In 2013, heart disease accounted for nearly 290,000 deaths among United States women. And people tend to believe that breast cancer is the real concern, but these numbers are far greater than the numbers for breast cancer. Heart attacks in particular claimed 50,000 women's lives in, in 2014. Physicians tend not to target women. So interestingly, we know that about half of women realize that heart disease is the leading cause of death for them. Uh, half is not where we want to be among people's awareness, but it's better than I thought. However, I skipped ahead. Only 39% of physicians target women as having heart disease as their primary risk. So half of women are aware that it's their primary risk, but only 39% of physicians are responding as though it's their primary risk. So this is a concern. So when we talk about symptoms of heart disease, of a heart attack, they differ between men and women. Uh, I don't know how many of you read the Wall Street Journal, but on Saturday there was a terrific write-up by a retired coronary care intensive care unit nurse who had a heart attack and she failed to recognize it as such and her husband is a physician. So it was a dramatic read, it really got me going. Um, but women are less likely to feel crushing chest pain, rather they feel pain in the back, arms, neck, or jaw. They may have indigestion or nausea. They often have a sense of dread. Uh, they may feel weakness, they may have difficulty breathing. That was one of her, her primary things, were nausea, difficulty breathing, and profuse sweating. And we have gender differences in terms of the speed of treatment. In general, men and women who experience symptoms of myocardial infarction tend to think, oh, it'll pass in a day or two. In a day or two, I might call the physician. But the average data for women delaying is over three times the delay of men. I think partly, I'm not being facetious, I think partly because female partners of men urge them to seek help. Um, let me see if I can go back. I think I need to go back. Even if they do seek emergency assistance, they tend to wait 37 minutes longer than men on the average if they seek immediate emergency assistance. And once they do seek emergency assistance, it can take an average of 30 minutes longer for women than men to reach the hospital. In this article on Saturday in the Wall Street Journal, the EMTs who responded to this woman after the neighbor called them uh, had, didn't believe that she was in an urgent situation. They kept telling her to stop, you know, stop hyperventilating and answer our questions when in fact that was an urgent sign that she needed to be transported. Outcomes of treatment are not as favorable for women. Uh, women who survive are more likely to have complications in the hospital, such as shock, bleeding, or heart failure. Women are likelier than men who've had a heart attack to die within one year of their heart attack. This is in part because they are older when they have it, and they may have, they're more likely to have comorbid uh, conditions. Unfortunately, we find and I'm gathering data here from CDC, American Heart Association, uh, NIH uh, in particular, that physicians are less likely to follow cardiac guidelines with women than with male patients. And women are less likely than men to adhere to the medication regime or to participate in cardiac rehab. Uh, I can speculate, I am a women's health person. Decades of women's health research tells us that women tend to 
put themselves last in line after they take care of family. So I'm wondering if that's a factor in their uh, lack of participation in cardiac rehab. 90% of US women have at least one risk factor for heart disease, uh, elevated blood pressure, diabetes, elevated cholesterol, excess weight, smoking, still one in seven women are smoking in the United States, inactivity, poor diet, excess alcohol consumption, a history of preterm delivery, preeclampsia, or gestational diabetes, and depression. So what can health providers do about this? Be aware, heart disease is the number one killer of women. Increasingly, we talk about the wonders of the electronic health record for data analytics to give us guidance in the future to identify people at risk early. However, we also know that attending to the basics is really important. Understanding, believing the prevalence of heart disease for women and getting accurate and complete personal and family health history data from women. What can women do? Know your blood pressure, quit smoking, ask if you should be tested for diabetes or elevated serum lipids, eat a Mediterranean diet, which emphasizes whole grains, fresh fruits and vegetables, fish and healthy fats, try to reduce your excess weight, Engage in 150 minutes a week, that's the US Public Health Service standard of physical activity. Limit alcohol to one serving per day. Reduce stress and incorporate healthy stress coping strategies and be aware heart disease is your number one killer. Uh, a wonderful program unrolled by the CDC targets low income uninsured and underinsured women between the ages of 40 and 64, it's called Wise Women standing for well-integrated screening and evaluation for women across this nation. You can find their toolkit within the CDC website. Uh, these are the resources that I used. I did not go back to the primary references underlying these websites, but these are great websites. And an additional website is the statement of the American Heart Association that was published in circulation in 2016 by Meta and Associates. And that is it. Any questions? That was awesome. Thank Succinct, you. Succinct, to the point, Thank and you. well, okay. good. All and right. researched. Thank you so much. That was excellent. Okay. So, are we able to put this up on the uh, Radnor Township website? That'd be wonderful. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Schartz Hopko. Really appreciate it. Okay, so um, just moving forward for the next few months, um, I was looking at um, having five to ten minute. Um, presentations and Dr. Shard Topko's obviously was excellent and um, Superintendent Flanagan's. So next month, uh, Catherine Carla Mango from uh, Radnor Township is gonna talk about food safety. Um, Dr. Connor, we're gonna move you till April. So for colorectal awareness, uh, post a month, so that'll be fine. Um, I can try and put it, I can send you my slides too if you want to get it up on the website before I give it or if you want me to wait till April, whatever you prefer. We can wait. That's fine. Thank you so much. Um, Brimmore Hospital opened up a brand new pavilion. Uh, uh, the Radnor Township Board of Health was invited. Uh, Dr. Shartz Hopko and myself were there to uh, the ribbon cutting for the new pavilion. So it's a uh, five, six story uh, building. It is absolutely beautiful. So I was hoping to maybe invite uh, someone from Brimmer Hospital to speak about that um, next month because that's a huge um, addition to our community and for local residents. So I thought that would be good. Um, April, I'm looking at uh, maybe some alcohol awareness. So uh, we'll follow up with that. Uh, May is Stroke Awareness and Mental Health Month um, and Melanoma Skin Cancer. So. Um, I have somebody, we have a um, robust uh, stroke program at Mainline Health and um, a physician and um, a team has agreed to maybe come and speak about uh, stroke awareness in May. Um, maybe we can do something along mental health in May and then uh, June, our student presentations. So I didn't know if anybody had any other burning desire to maybe do a five minute, 10 minute presentation on anything. Talking for next fall, right? Sure, we could do. Is this for this next fall? Or for no, this is for this uh, spring. Okay. So we have uh, Which March one is open. We have March. We have food safety. 
Um, and uh, April will be colorectal awareness and maybe alcohol awareness month. May will be stroke and, and June the pr uh, yes, presentation. September. It's probably September. September, September. Yeah. okay. I, I mean, I have two ideas that, that I'd like to do. One, um, I've been thinking about this for a while and I went to a town this weekend which really kind of made it coalesce for me, um, sort of a creating um, a healthy ecosystem within our township with you know the flora and fauna. And one of the things that, that I observed, um, I was in a town this weekend, Fairhope, uh, Alabama. One of the things that they do, and I'm just throwing out this as an example of things that I'd like to look at how other townships do things such as this. Um, one of the things they're doing, they're along the migratory path of monarchs from Mexico to, you know, all the way to Canada. And their um, monarch population has almost completely dropped off due to, due to different factors um, at which they've studied. But one of the things that they're doing is um, a controlled burn where they're then planting milkweed and other monarch um, things, uh, foliage that monarchs feed on to, um, to assist the population. So like, I'd like to look at different ideas like that, what other um, townships and localities are, are doing to, um, to support their native species or migratory species. Um, and then the other thing that I was thinking of is um, cats, which we had talked about. Um, one of the things, there's a lot of research in the veterinary community now, uh, the benefits of indoor, outdoor living for cats. And so I th think that's something that we should um, discuss as a township, the health benefits for our cats, since probably 60% or more of households in our township have cats. <laughs> There's some creative and good ideas. So let's uh, think about that this spring. Okay. And then definitely for the fall would be great because usually we're just getting back and getting things together and don't have any talks until like October and November. So that would be awesome. All right, thank you very much. Um, all right, so uh, just one announcement. I wanted to talk a little bit about the flu. It's not too late to get your flu shot. Um, in the past week, according to the CDC, we, we've had a very active flu year. It seems like in the hospital, we have seen more flu this year. Um, a lot of people seem to be coming to hospitals, urgent cares, that sort of thing for flu-like um, symptoms. However, it's not as severe as last year. And actually in the past week, the flu rates have dropped a little bit. So, but we're still in the throes of the flu season. So if you wanna get your flu shot, minute clinics, that sort of thing, still offer the flu shot, and it takes about two weeks for um, the flu shot to be effective. So just a plug for that. Um, a couple of tips. If you get sick with the flu, you can use antiviral drugs. You want to get them on board quickly, especially for those folks at high risk with a lot of comorbidities, heart disease, um, cancer, that sort of thing, would um, definitely be encouraged to take the antivirals early. Um, some preventative ways, um, definitely you wanna avoid close contact uh, with sick people. If you are sick, you wanna limit contact with others as much as possible from getting them infected. Um, if you're sick with the flu, definitely stay home for at least 24 hours, even after your fever is gone. So that's very important. You can still be shedding virus. So you wanna stay home for an additional 24 hours. Um, Obviously, you want to cover your nose and mouth with a tissue when you call for sneeze. And um, after using the tissue, make sure you throw it away and wash your hands with soap and water. If you don't have soap and water, you can definitely use alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Works great. Um, also, avoid touching your um, eyes, nose, and mouth because if you touch an object contaminated with the virus, you can um, easily infect yourself. And then you want to clean and disinfect surfaces and objects that um, you may be contaminated with flu germs, um, maybe Clorox um, bleach wipes, that sort of thing um, would help with that. So just a little tidbit about that. 
All right, um, any public participation? I have two suggestions for topics you might do. I think a program on heat and how heat affects people so that people understand the warning signs of heat stroke, particularly as our, I sound like a broken record, particularly as our climate warms. They're saying that by <clears throat> 2040, we're gonna have, in the Philadelphia area, we're gonna have 75 days of over 90 degrees. And the other, and I don't <clears throat> know whether it's an issue in Radnor, but I, as a person, I used to be a standardized patient and I always had an internal chuckle when the students would say, now, have you had your inoculations? And I'd say, oh, you mean measles, mumps, chicken pox, German measles? And they'd go, yes. And I'd say, oh no, we have them all. So I'm really, uh, and I have a son-in-law who will not allow my granddaughters to have vaccinations. He pays $75 a year to an internet church so he can get a religious exception. I don't know what's going on, but I think a discussion of the importance of vaccination is, and the community aspect of it is really important. I had a daughter who died of cancer with two little girls, and it was really dicey for the last three years of her life what these little girls were bringing home, and she was really vulnerable to. So I think those are two topics. The other thing that we discussed today in our meeting <clears throat> is to try to begin to get a baseline on the incidence of asthma and COPD and heart disease in this township. This township's not gonna pay much attention to, to sea level rise unless they have a beach house or they go to the Caribbean. But I think health, will grab them. And we discussed how would we get a baseline. Kathy, do you know whether the school nurses know who, how many get asthma, or is there, are there any records about this? Does anybody have any idea how we're gonna get a baseline so as time passes we know? Probably what, talking to all the allergists and yeah. surveying all the allergists in the area. There's a thought. Because I don't think Because we've got some big yeah. uh, allergy practices in, um, at, in our area at Bryn Mawr, a huge practice. All right, good I idea. don't think that's something the state keeps track of. You well, uh, according so. to health.pa.gov, okay. um, there are statistics that um, allow you to kind of go and look at um, the percentage of the population that, I guess, has asthma here, if I'm reading this right, um, by county. Now, I don't know if they drill down... We could maybe special because request those kinds of data. Delaware County doesn't have a public health department. Right. We run into that right again. Maybe one of the but, things. But we the need state to level may be a resource mm -hmm. for us, and so, you know, more obviously more of it falls on us, and we have to decide, you know, resource time wise how much we can do, and and there's obvious limitations to that. But I think it's a really important point that if there, you know, we, we say this at almost every meeting, mm -hmm. how we don't have a board mm -hmm. of health for Delaware <laughs> County. But we do have this board. Mm -hmm. And so we can control and use our energy to do what we can for our Radnor Township residents. We can't solve all of our problems, but I think, it's, I think it is reasonable for us to think about what can we do to put out on our website, you know, some effort on our part to say, okay, this is what we know from the state about Radnor Township, and here's that data, and track it yearly, and then maybe we release an annual report on metrics that we think are available to us and also of value. Um, that's a lot of that's a lot of time and resource to it do is. that, but we can reach out to them if we have an idea of the things that we're interested in. Um, as, you know, as having a background in public health, you know, there's public health practitioners that do research all the time based on state level data. Mm -hmm. So this stuff, to some extent, may be collected, and and you know, some of it just involves us reaching out to the state level folks and and figuring out what they are collecting about Radnor Township. I, I certainly know for cancer statistics, as that's a part of you know what I do a lot mm -hmm. of, is that th there are very detailed information by county. Um, regarding a variety of different um, cancers um, and incidents um, and survival, I think. Well, half the issue of getting our, around, our arms around this is beginning to ask questions. 
And so if we don't get the answer, we don't get the answer, but at least ask the questions. I mean, I know I'm a gardener, and I used to be up with the Skunk Hollow Community Garden, and I've noticed over the last several years more and more, now these are adults, more and more of them are saying, my allergies are getting terrible, or I've never had allergies before, what's going on? And the only way to really educate people and to change their behavior, in my opinion, is that they begin to understand some of this. No, I'm not the only person who's sneezing and can't go outside, or I'm, the only, I'm not the only person who's finding the sun is so hot and it's burning me and I just don't feel well because we have to do this as a community. I think that's a really good point. So we have children in our community that are high-risk asthma. Um, we have uh, our older population that are at higher risk. And as we start to see higher temperatures, um, in the summertime especially, is there an opportunity for us to put out um, air quality index stuff um, or a link to that somehow on our website so uh, Radnor Township members can go out onto the website and then figure out in a very easy and efficient way what the air quality index is and who might be at risk. Well, um, and, and that, that data I know is available through the level yellow, orange to red. Uh, but that was part of our discussion today is I just planted the seed to uh, see if Villanova couldn't engineer an air quality station. There's one at the airport, and there's one at Wingsfield. And that's it. And the Wingsfield one does not, you can't get at the data. The one at the airport, you can get at their data. So if we're going to do something about it, let's be a leader. And so I went to Villanova and planted the seed May, fa may have fallen on fallow ground, but you can't deal with something if you don't have the data. And I know these are the questions that we're gonna to begin to ask as we move into this. So that's my public, but I'd love to see something done on heat. I don't think people realize the uh, seriousness of being too hot, and they don't, I can see it in the garden all the time. They don't have a clue as to what the symptoms are and that they should be aware of them. And you can die from heat stroke or from sunstroke. So I'd love to see you do something on that. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. All right, thank you very much. All right, well, I think we had a very uh, productive meeting. And if anybody else has any other comments, I'd like to adjourn. Okay, um, our next meeting will be Monday, March 18th, 530 here in the Radnishire Room. Thanks.